pretty famous expression that I'm sure is politically incorrect. <laughs> it used to go something like this. There's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> and I'm sure that if I said that today, it would be misconstrued and taken the wrong way. And that uh, somehow I would be ostracized by the SPCA for expressing a colloquialism that was probably meant to be referring to the old days when actually we weren't too upset about skinning a cat because we wore cat skins. Maybe not kitty cats, but <laughs> animal skins. And in Alaska, you know, where the furriers are, we don't have that much of an issue with, you know, there being that expression. So it all depends on, I guess, where you are and how you're raised and what you're dealing with today. But when you look at scriptures, sometimes people misunderstand words that are in there, even as they misunderstand expressions sometimes that people use. You know, nowadays we have the, boy, I can't even begin to get into the alphabet. You know, any four-letter word you can't say, and then now we've got the, you can't say the N-word, you can't say the P-word, I can't even think of what each one of them represent now, but I know that there's a lot of alphabets that you can't say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if you go out on the street, even though you can't say those words technically on TV, and they seem to be getting in trouble for it, if you go out on the street, you're going to hear it every day, you know, sadly. And I don't hang around, you know, people that choose to express themselves that way, not for very long, because it kind of kind of gets on my nerves, you know. When I was in the Marine Corps, the F word was the most popular thing we said. Every two, literally every three words would be an F word, and we were pretty good at it, you know, and that was a Marine Corps kind of thing, and it was pretty stupid. And when I got out of the Corps, it took me a long time to get over saying it, you know, and I was surprised by how much it had indoctrinated me. Well, a lot of times, those aren't meant the way they're said. They're just said as being something repetitious. You know, they're vain, they're not meaningful. And the same thing is true a lot of times about when we use words in Scripture. We talk about sometimes the word temptation, you know. Like in the Scripture that we use, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you be able to bear it. Now, that all sounds good, doesn't it? But what is temptation? Is it sin or is it being tempted? What does tempted mean? It means that you still have the opportunity of choice. It means you're able to decide which way you'll go. When you were tempted, you could be tempted in a good way. I'm tempted to enter the ministry. I'm tempted to, in other words, I'm leaning towards something or I'm being provoked or it's causing me to consider in a certain direction. So it means you're starting to entertain the idea. So the idea does come into your head, but the actual action of doing it hasn't quite accomplished itself. And that's why temptation though it's construed sometimes as a negative word, is simply the idea of it can come to you to provoke you into a certain direction. It might be wrong, but it might be right. So, in a lot of times, in terms, be careful of how you use them, because sometimes they don't always mean exactly what you think they do, but they might be something that you use in your normal everyday expression or words that are partial to your part of the country, and may not mean the same thing once you enter into quote-unquote spiritual dynamics or sharing the Word of God, as, as most of us do. But in being tempted, just remember that it will happen to you. It always does. We are a generation that's visually stimulated. We have made that a very visual or visceral type of existence, that everything around us is customized in order to attack your senses, to assault you. Even now we have literally gotten into assaulting the hearing, meaning that it used to be like in my generation, um, 
being overwhelmed by the sound, we'd crank up the bass or crank up the, actually the speaker systems. So we had bass and mid range and high end. So it'd just be constant blasting. Then later on, generations came along that they cranked up the bass, you know, and you could always tell the bass of a, some low rider car or some other car that had a huge bass system because you could feel the vibration before the car ever got there. <laughs> Well, that was assaulting the ears. Then it became more of a spiritual battle because we began to get into talk radio and began to get into telling people things in a certain way where it was construed or misconstrued on purpose. And then it became trash talk and then it got worse and worse. And so you see, there's been a, a great assault on our senses and being a visual and an assaulting generation that we live in, you have to be careful of the temptation, you know, to participate in certain things around you because you will be tempted. You can't live in this generation without being tempted in some way. You can't live as a human being without being tempted in something. And because of that, you know, we do pray in the Lord's Prayer, you know, lead us not into temptations. You know, in other words, don't bring us to that place where we have to choose because we'd rather not have to make that choice because we know ourselves and it's too easy to give in to something. Like you probably have your own temptations that are just a little too overwhelming. Like if you're a smoker, you know that if you smell smoke, there's fire and you're gonna get burned because you're gonna go down and smoke with them. <laughs> or if there's chocolate, you know, and you happen to be a chocolate fanatic, you know, you're gonna dive into that pool, you know, and enjoy those calories or that sugar high. Or if it's, uh, pride, you know, that first time you get a chance to be in front of the camera, oh man, talk about a scene stealer, or it could be, you know, ego with music, you know, the first time you get to lead worship, wow, didn't you see how the people reacted? Did you listen to yourself? <laughs> Even pastors, you know, listening to their own message, you know, or considering sometimes being tempted by thinking that their message came from them because they spent all that time preparing rather than the Lord actually anointing them in some way and having him take over speaking for them as opposed to them speaking. But we all are tempted, you know, but it doesn't mean that we have to sin when we are tempted. And today, in starting your day, temptation isn't sin. In the day when I called, you answered me and you strengthened me with strength might and inflexibility to temptation in my inner self. Psalm 138, 13. Temptation to do wrong can make you feel horrible. You may think, I shouldn't be going through this. I shouldn't be having a problem with this. But God taught me that temptation isn't sin. We sin when we give in to temptation. The Bible says temptation will come. It doesn't say, woe unto him to whom it comes. It says, woe unto him by whose hand it comes. See Matthew 17, 7. Jesus told us to pray that we would not give in to temptation when we are tempted. See Luke 22, 40. Psalm 105, 4 is a great way to start your day right. It says, seek, inquire of, and seek, inquire of for the Lord and crave him and his strength. Seek and require his face and his presence continually forevermore. The funny thing is, is that what you focus your attention on is what you pay attention to. So, frankly, if you thought God was watching all the time, you might not be tempted to sin. But to be honest, yes, you will. Because like any other human being, you're going to rationalize that what you know in your mind you haven't quite applied to your heart, so your heart will lead you into some kind of sin when you're tempted. But if you could actually visualize God standing there, whoa, wait a minute, what if you could actually picture someone else standing there? Oh no, then I wouldn't do that. Well then guess what? Jesus sent them out as twos for that very reason, and that's why we have fellowship. Because when someone else is there, two are better than one, and a three-strand cord is not easily broken. The reason being is that two, when one falls, the other can lift them up. So you see, temptation can be met.
by the realization that fellowship of the spirit and fellowship with your brethren or sister and or you know brother and sister can help in some ways for you to not give in to temptation but to recognize that one of you yeah. is spiritual it can help the other one who may have fallen into some kind of gray area or being tempted and if you're willing to admit it you could call up someone and say hey you know what i'm being tempted right now and that person could pray for you and maybe even offer to come over and spend time with you because i'll be honest with you when you got two people literally that are willing to seek the lord together then you're not going to be thinking about what you're tempted about you're going to be thinking about to put it bluntly putting on a good show for that person but if you get to the place of being real with each other you can get to some kind of transparency where you can let your walls down and maybe arrive where Jesus and his disciples did, where you can actually be one and know full well that, yeah, you're you're kind of carnal, so, you know, you need me over there, brother, because <laughs> I know you're going to take that drink, you know, and when you start that first drink, it's going on to that third and fourth. So find for yourself the answer that God has for you today to meet with you, because it might be it's someone else that likewise has already been through that temptation and has a way of escape that they can offer to you when you're tempted to give in to sin. And then if you do sin, of course, confess your sins to the Father. But then work on something else. Try spending a little more time, maybe a little more communication, not just with God in heaven, but with your brother here on earth. Maybe he needs you as much as you need him.